still using this um, this other uh, uh, text that we had. I think the easiest thing to do is just delete it. Uh, you can go and copy this frame, oops, and then paste frame right back on there. It's also a great way to show you that copy frame and paste frame exist. And again, we just need to retint it. Um, what you could have done if you wanted to be a little bit smarter uh, about setting this up is not done any of the keyframing on on these uh, items until you do, you know until you had made duplications of all three. But Again, some of these things I do, I kind of do for the purpose of teaching as well. All right, so uh, now to this last thing to the, or uh, duplicate this last one. Uh, you might not by default have duplicate or um, this uh, command D or Apple D uh, on the PC would be, I believe, control D or actually it's anything you want because this is a custom hotkey that I set up. Um, I just realized that, you know, you duplicate symbols so often, you might as well uh, have a hotkey for it. And you can go over to, to uh, keyboard shortcuts at any time and, and uh, set up your own hotkeys. I'm not going to go into that in the tutorial though. But uh, if you ever see me just kind of magically duplicate a symbol, that's all I've done is I've hit my personal hotkey for that. Call that uh, menu item three. And now I can go inside of here and I'll just put in my contact info. Once again, I'm going to left align this guy. Try to set it up where the other one was. Okay, click back over this way. Now, uh, an alternate way of doing this would be to go to Modify, Symbol, Swap Symbol, and then you can go and select out um, a symbol to swap it out for. So, again, we'll choose that uh, menu item 3. And I think we are good to go in terms of starting to put some action script inside of here. Okay, um, you know what? Let me just delete out that. And uh, someone out there might be wondering, hey, you know what? Uh, why even, um, why even put those the the text inside of a symbol to begin with? Wouldn't it just be easier to go? and uh, leave them alone altogether and then type out uh, on each of these keyframes or leave it as editable text on each of those keyframes. Uh, you know, you could do that and I've done that before in files and I've always kind of regretted doing it uh, because it's a lot easier, I think, uh, to uh, be able to just double click inside of uh, that movie clip that contains the text uh, and then make the textual changes because then that gets reflected on every keyframe and in many cases you might not have just two keyframes you could have six seven eight nine ten keyframes out this way or you could you could even have animation going on um, with your text in which case you absolutely have to have it um, be a movie clip like I could have faded um, from uh, white to black uh, on rollover and of course we'll talk about things like that in a little bit but uh, if, you, if your head is jumping forward here to conclusions wondering why certain things are the way they are that's one reason and okay I can't avoid writing script any longer let's go ahead and create another layer up top here we'll call this uh, action script hey we'll even call it action script 3 how about that select this um, frame and you know let's go ahead and move all our stuff over a little bit and I was about to open up the actions window, but there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to make it so that we can actually communicate um, to our uh, menus via action scripts. And uh, that means we need to give it an instance name, okay? So let's call it something aptly named like menu one, menu two, menu three, and if I was setting up um, a website that, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a great case uh, in point here, but I'd probably also be tempted to go with like naming the, the instances as portfolio, um, hobby, contact info. Um, for my teaching purposes, it's going to be probably just a little bit easier to give those um, generic kind of numerically stepped up names. But I think in a real world uh, case, it's probably better to just go ahead and give it something appropriate. Uh, okay, let's begin. Uh, we're going to write menu one dot add event listener 
And as many of you know, I tend to fight with my microphone uh, to get around to the keyboard because my mic has to be right in front of me, but uh, so does the keyboard. Otherwise, I feel like, I don't know. I've tried other situations, but uh, sometimes I just can't see over the keyboard and, or, you know, if you and see me do typos and things like that. I'm not that bad. All right, uh, let's talk about what we just typed out here. Uh, we are creating an event listener, okay? So uh, Flash is going to be listening out for something to happen based on this, okay? And mouse events are uh, one of them. All right, so we just type mouse, mouse event out here dot mouse over. And uh, you can imagine that when we mouse over, something is going to occur, and that something will be a function called go to uh, over, or which is it stands for our, our over state, okay, our highlighted state. And for right now, um, I think that's all we need to talk about that with that particular line. Go down here and write function. Go to over. And by the way, if your colors get uh, color coded to something other than mine, you could consider going over here to your preferences and uh, pausing the video. Well, actually, the video might pause itself. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to show you the, my color coding for action script. There we go. And uh, so you could pause the video and kind of match it up with uh, what I have right here, um, which kind of, I think, harkens back to the color coding from Flash many years ago that I've just kind of perpetuated. Okay. And now, what is this next part? Let me type it out and we'll talk about it. All right. The function name is uh, go to and over, go to over, and between this tag and this tag is going to be the code that occurs when you roll over uh, that particular menu item, menu one, okay. Uh, what's in parentheses here um, is a uh, uh, an essential part. We write event, uh, then semicolon, and then a, a little trick that actually I didn't realize until, I didn't put together until a Another instructor for the site pointing this out for me is that this mouse event is always going to be whatever, or the, the, the part after the colon is always going to be whatever the first part of our uh, event listener was. Okay, I can't believe I never noticed that before. Uh, but uh, there's not that many different things that you that go in here anyway. So it's, uh, anyway. Uh, and then this last part we put in is void, which means that we are not returning anything from this function. And I'm going to just tell you that and not go and explain it because it's not something that you really need to know about right now. Uh, basically we're just making things happen within the opening and closing brackets and those are those squiggly brackets if you don't have the best eyes in the world they're not uh, opening and closing parentheses they are uh, if you hold down shift and the keys with uh, well the key next to the P is the first squiggly bracket. Okay. Now, we could write menu one dot go to and stop frame two. And in fact, let's go ahead and test it like that. Go over here to control, test movie. That might be the last time I go and go the slow way of doing that. But you can see that things uh, work now. Well, they kind of work because um, we haven't um, written any sort of uh, mouse out for it. So I, I, I moused over. I'm on frame two, but there's no way of getting off of frame two at this point. But just the very fact that I got there, that uh, shows that things are working. Okay, I'm gonna use this same function for these other menu items right here, okay? So uh, let's say that I just pasted out menu two, or I just pasted that line, put menu two in there. So now that symbol is listening out for uh, the same, uh, event okay or action and it's going to do the same function when we roll over but uh, if you can kind of think about this without me publishing well if i were to roll over menu two it's actually going to make menu one be the one that goes to frame two all right so what we want to do is kind of uh generify this a little bit make it more generic we're going to write event dot target dot go to and stop okay and then here is one of the nice benefits of having something in uh, the parentheses here which gives us a linkage back to the um, the event that is taking place okay because if you have an event you also have a target alright our target was this uh, symbol